Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the dig command to look up DNS records. And if you never use the dig command, that's okay. I'm gonna show you how to install it on different operating systems and then do some queries, some basic queries as far as looking up, you know, A records, MX records, um, even reverse DNS records. So if that's something you wanna learn how to do, let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here. Um, I'm gonna be using my MacBook and by default dig, the, the dig command dig is installed on uh, Mac. But if you are, you know, on uh, an Ubuntu server or Debian server, you can install it with apt-get install DNS utils. And um, CentOS, it's very similar, uh, yum install bind utils, okay? Um, and then I don't, I honestly don't know about Windows if if there's a dig functionality on there. Uh, you'll have to do your own research, but um, if you're on Macs or a Unix type of operating system like that, Linux, something like that, then you should be good to go to follow along on this tutorial. Okay, so um, basically the syntax for a dig, like when you execute the dig command, you usually provide um, dig and then the name of the server and then uh, the type of, uh, name that you want to look up and then the type of record that you want to look up. So that's basically the basic syntax and you can look at the manual for dig by typing in man dig and you'll see that same uh, type of information here. Okay, but let, let's go through some basic use cases here. So let's see, um, just if we do dig and then the name of a website, we'll use tonyteaches.tech as our example. And by default, without specifying any of those options uh, or any other command line arguments, um, we will look up A records only. So here we can see that it's doing its thing here and it's spitting back out the A records for tonyteaches.tech. And I spelled it wrong, so there is no A records. Uh, Tony teach. Uh, yeah, I just need to do that again. So Tony, T-E-A-C-H-E-S dot tech. Uh, and then we'll query that. And there we go. This looks like more legit A record. So basically we have two A records here, uh, one for this IP address and one for this IP address. Now, if th that's equivalent right here as doing dig Tony teaches tech uh, A, we'll get back the same exact thing. Now, instead of doing an A record, we can look up an MX record. So dig Tony teaches dot tech and then MX, and that'll show all the MX records. So you can tell just by looking at this, what type, or to a certain extent, what kind of email hosting I'm using. And I'm using the Google's um, email forwarding, email alias uh, for my email hosting. Uh, so that gives you a little bit of insight there because at, at the end of the day, all this information is public information. It's just a matter of knowing how to query it. Um, you can also specify which DNS server you're looking at because as you know, uh, or maybe you don't know, there's multiple DNS servers scattered throughout the world and um, not all at all times, not all DNS servers have the same exact information. You know, the information is being propagated from one server to the next uh, with the latest information. So if you wanna specify, for example, to use Google's DNS servers, you can do that with something like this, dig, and then the at symbol, and then the DNS server that you wanna use. So if you're not familiar, uh, Google owns the DNS server with IP address 8.8.8.8, .8 and then the name of the website that you want to query. So again, we'll use tonyteaches.tech, and that'll, because it's the same, that'll return um, the same information because the DNS servers are identical. Now, if we scroll back up here, I wanna point this out. So the server at this point we're using is 8.8.8.8. .8 That's the server that we're querying. But um, if we go back up to when we did the dig without specifying the DNS server, this was querying this server with the, with the IP version six IP address. Where where did this come from? Well, if on your if you're on Mac, um, and maybe it's similar for Ubuntu and Linux. Uh, if we look at our etc resolve .com file, you'll see that these are the name servers that uh, are preferred for our system. So if you wanted to, you can come in here and add in, you know, Google's name server. If there's another name server that you prefer, then you can add that to this, this file. Um, although this says this is automatically generated, um, there's probably a better way to, to do that. So don't take my word on that, but this is, I just want to show you that that's where these are the name servers that our local computer is using. 
Okay, um, what if we wanted to see all the DNS records for uh, a particular domain name? Well, we can do that. Um, we'll, we'll, do the, we'll keep the same syntax. We'll query Google's DNS server, dig 8.8.8.8, and then we'll say Tony teaches.tech, and then instead of saying a specific record, we'll just say any, any DNS record for that domain name. We'll hit enter, and we get a whole heck of a lot more information here. So we can see the same A records, um, we can see, I'm not even sure what this is, rsig, an rsig record, name server records, um, these are the name servers that I'm using, um, SOA records, those MX records again, DNS keys, um, they're huge values, like this whole thing pretty much is the value. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a way, a quick way to see all the DNS records for a particular domain name. Um, and like I promised, we can also do reverse DNS. So how do we do a reverse DNS? And if you're not familiar, reverse DNS is a pointer record, PTR. And um, instead of, you know, an A record mapping uh, a domain name to an IP address, a pointer record maps an IP address to a domain name. So we already know the domain name for uh, my website, Tony Florida, or yeah, Tony Teaches Tech. Um, so let's use this IP address to see if we could do a reverse DNS lookup. So let's do dig, and to do the reverse DNS lookup, you do dash X, and then the IP address. Hit enter. And you'll see, in this case, because I'm hosted um, with WPX hosting, WPX.net, that's what comes back for the value instead of my... Um, actual domain name. Now let me show you a different example where there's actually a one-to-one -one relationship between the A record and the pointer record. And I, I had set this up before, so I have a website called site6.xyz. So we'll just look up the A record for that. And you'll see that that's at this IP address. Now if we do um, dig-x and then this IP address, uh, I have a pointer record set up for that and we should come back with the value of site6.xyz. And there you can see the pointer record having a uh, site6.xyz value as the actual value. Um, this is this last part. The last thing that I want to talk about here is kind of related. Um, it's still the dig command, but I just want to show you uh, that this functionality exists. So if we do, we can do a trace root with dig. So if we do dig, Tony teaches dot tech and then plus trace and this will go through all the servers that it hits on the way to the final destination so what does that look like well the first thing that it's gonna hit is uh, the, the root servers okay so these are the root name servers there's I think 13 of them that, that kind of keep track of all the DNS records um, and then it goes to the name servers that are specific to my uh, domain name extension. So the .tech domain name servers are next in this sequence. And then it goes to Google's domain name servers, which are, I bought my Tony teaches.tech domain name uh, from Google domain. So that's next. And then finally, uh, it shows the A records for my domain name. Okay, so that was a lot of information. Hopefully it made sense. Hopefully you have a better idea about how to use the dig command to look up DNS records. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up if you got some value out of it. Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this from me in the future. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.